Hi, this is Andrew Grant, author of False Friend, and you're listening to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast. Welcome to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast, where we invite you to spend just a few minutes with the staff at Cook Library. I'm Nate Goss, and I'm here today with Erica, our newest addition to the Popular Services Department. Welcome to the podcast, Erica. Thank you for having me. Uh, Erica is not only an ardent and fanatical reader, but she also has an insider's view of the writing process as she is a published author herself. So I'm really excited to dig into her pick, but before we jump right into your pick of the week, um, could you maybe, you know, just introduce yourself just a little bit and maybe talk briefly about your writing background and what types of books you enjoy, even just as a reader? Sure. Um, so my name is Erica Rourke. I'm a published author. Um, I tend to write young adult sci-fi or fantasy. I also write adult mysteries under a pen name, um, Lucy Kerr. My writing tends to follow my reading in that I'm a very eclectic reader, so I enjoy historical fiction. I enjoy mysteries. I like all sorts of YA. I thoroughly enjoy middle grade, so you can often find me wandering the children's department, just pulling things off shelves to take home and um, share with my kids, but also just read for my own enjoyment. Yeah. So uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, move over to your uh, pick for the week. So what is the book that you think everyone should try out? Oh, I am so excited about Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology. Um, A lot of people know Neil Gaiman because of Neverwhere, um, which has been adapted both for TV and radio, or American Gods, which is coming out through um, Stars at the end of April, or they know him through his graphic novels. But he's also written some nonfiction, um, a biography of Douglas Adams. Um, But his newest release is, it's nonfiction, and it's this compendium of... Norse mythology. And he starts at the very beginning. He calls it the beginning before the beginning and goes all the way through Ragnarok, um, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's also the title of the new Thor movie that's coming out in the fall. Hmm. So this is kind of the perfect time for this book to come out. And what I love about it is it's written in that quintessential game and style. There's a lot of humor, but it's not slapstick. Um, It's this very rich and evocative language, and the settings come to life. And he really delves into the personalities of the gods and how they interact with each other. And it's not written with archaic language. So even though as you're reading it, it feels like something that's meant to be told aloud, um, the language is still very modern and fresh. And again, funny. I just found myself laughing out loud um, as I read it at many, many points. Yeah. You know, I I was going to ask you because in your in your blog post for this uh, for this pick that you wrote this week, uh, you you said, quote, Neil Gaiman could write an air conditioner repair manual and I would cheerfully read it. So (laughs) what? Yeah. And so, (laughs) you know. Um, it's kind of a two-part question. First is, you know, what is it specifically about Neil Gaiman that you love so much? And then also, what do you think makes Gaiman the ideal choice for bringing back these mythological stories? Um, so I think Neil Gaiman, and I'm going to answer the first que- or second question first, I think Neil Gaiman is one of those authors who truly just wants to write about the stuff that he loves. Mm-hmm. And he talks in the introduction about how as a child he started reading the Thor comics and was fascinated by Norse mythology as it was portrayed through Marvel, um, which is perhaps not the truest reflection of Norse mythology. Yeah. But if you're a seven-year-old boy, it's fantastic. Yeah, the pop culture version of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then he went back and he read more of the original source material and just found that it was this incredibly rich vein of material. And you can see, if you've read American Gods, I'm not going to spoil anything about it, but Norse mythology plays very heavily into that story. And I think for him, you can just 
sense his sheer delight in retelling these stories. It's like um, reading a, a, a Norse mythology fanboy just geeking out about this yes, stuff. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and it's it's almost a little poignant because he talks in the introduction about the fact that we've lost so many of these myths. There aren't a lot of myths about the Norse goddesses. And he he makes a concerted effort to bring them to life as best he can. But he also bemoans the fact that most of those stories have kind of faded away. Mm-hmm. I feel like Gaiman did an excellent job of really capturing the spirit of those stories. Yeah. You know, why don't we actually back up just a little bit, do a little history? Because I know next to nothing about Norse mythology. Okay. Um, maybe for our listeners who share the same ignorance that I do... What is Norse mythology as opposed to Greek mythology, for instance? Like, what region and time period are we really talking about here? Oh, in terms of time period, I don't... I think myths are just old. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, So, before the beginning. Um, I think, you know, Norse mythology tends to concentrate in, like, Norway and Sweden and all of those very, well, Nordic areas. Um, the, you know, it's cold, it's icy... Is this kind of like, um, when you think of like Vikings and things yeah, like that? Yeah, Northern European type mythology as opposed to anything from Greece. Some of it has translated over into um, Britain and things like that. And he traces kind of the route of how those myths have traveled through Europe. But I think Norse mythology, those are stories that were captured. They've kind of been passed down to us in fragments. If you listen to them or if you read them, they are stories that are meant to be told orally, that they're, they're meant to be passed down um, from storyteller to storyteller, and they have that kind of rhythm and pattern to them. Yeah, because did a lot of those, you know, Nordic civilizations or societies, did they even have a written language at all? I mean, you, you definitely get that with Egyptian mythology with, like, you know, right. the hieroglyphics and things like that. So what, what did, does Gaiman get into it all, his source material even? Are these like, you know, he's going back to something that's actually been written down or is he talking he to people? You know? No, he's getting them from um, the poetic Edda and the prose Edda. So there are written records. They're just very fragmented. Sure, yeah. And it gives him a lot of room to, to kind of play with them. Yeah, and actually that's um, a, a good point. It's a collection of myths. Mm-hmm. You know, how much of this book, this specific Norse mythology book by Neil Gaiman, do you think is Gaiman's creation or interpretation and how much is actually purely a retelling? I mean, or is it, 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 does it matter? I think that there's a significant portion of it that's being retold. It's told as a novel, so it's not simply Thor had a hammer and then he lost it to this giant and then Loki had a crazy plan to get it back because they didn't want to marry off Thor's wife. Um, So, I mean, obviously he's interspersed it with dialogue and action, and he's really brought them to life. I think as much as he can, he's tried to stay true to what has been passed down in the prose edda, the poetic edda, some of the other source material that he read. But he's translating it into a novel. Hmm. It it very clearly has a beginning and an end, and you kind of watch the, the gods as they journey toward Ragnarok. But it's episodic. This does seem like the way you're talking about it. It seems like a book that actually should be read kind of cover to cover. Yes. That you wouldn't – it's not like a collection that you could pick up and just sort of, you know, flip through and find one story that's appealing and read that and then put it down and come back to it. Um, it you, as you're saying, it seems like it's actually one sort of narrative that, that runs through the whole thing. It feel, To me, it feels like one kind of continuous narrative. I suppose it is possible that you could pick up one story and read it, but that's a little bit like getting a box of delicious candies. And like, yes, you could only eat one of the Fannie Mae's, but why would you stop with one? <laughs> you're eat only, the whole box. <laughs> you're only cheating yourself exactly. out of deliciousness. Yeah. <laughs> if someone either doesn't know if they're into mythology or has never really had an interest. Do you think Gaiman is uh, providing a book here that that's easily accessible to people with even just um, uh, very little familiarity with the concept or subject? Yes, absolutely. I think it's a great entry point for learning about Norse mythology or just any kind of mythology and world belief system. Um, I think if you have not read American Gods but you've heard a lot of buzz about the series that's coming out, this is not a bad way to, to accustom yourself to some of the players. 
So there are there is crossover actually between some of these characters and what's in American Gods. Is, is oh yes, that, yeah, yes. I don't want to say any more for fear of spoilers, but <laughs> you will meet some of these characters. Yeah. So if people read Norse mythology and they really love it, uh, do you think American Gods is the next logical step for someone if they want to continue in sort of the Neil Gaiman? Um, yes, bibliography absolutely. Or, yeah, I think American Gods is kind of the natural extension of that. If you have kids at home, Rick, and I never pronounce his last name correctly, Rick Riordan um, does have a series for middle grade readers that's based on Thor. Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard mm, okay. is that series. But if you're looking for a middle grade Norse mythology, that would be my recommendation. Now, do you have a fa- favorite Norse god? Oh, I like Freya particularly as she's portrayed in this book. And so, um, and so what's what's her story? What's her um, uh, She's part? Thor's wife, and she's just not going to put up with any nonsense. Okay. <laughs> um, and frankly, Thor is not the sharpest pencil in the box, um, which leads to him often being tricked by Loki and by a, other, um, the giants and other players. And Freya just will have none of that. Yeah. Like, she's going to take care of business, and I enjoy that. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think you've definitely done a good enough job of uh, piquing my interest, especially, and hopefully of our listeners, to check out Norse Mythology by uh, Neil Gaiman. Um, so I just want to thank you for being on the podcast for your first time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You did a great job. So uh, hopefully we'll get you back on here for some more picks coming up. Um, so if you would like to check out Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman, you can search the title in our online catalog. We have the book in whatever format you prefer, regular, large type, audiobook, ebook, stone tablets, Morse code, the list goes on and on. Runes, Nordic yeah. runes, we've got those too. <laughs> You can search the catalog from our uh, website, which is www.cooklib.org. And while you're on that website, we actually recommend that you do take a brief detour to Shelf Life, the library's blog, where we regularly share what's new and interesting in books, movies, and music. The blog's address is shelflife.cooklib.org. And we'll actually link to Erica's blog post on Norse mythology in this episode's show notes, so you can get a direct link to that and, and read that. Uh, If you would ever like to get in touch and leave some feedback for us, you can always send us a message at webmaster at cooklib.org. If you enjoy this podcast, share it with someone. And one of the best things you can actually do to support us is take a moment to leave a kind rating on iTunes, which will help us get some notice. We will be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening. (music) 